Vegetative propagation is a type of asexual reproduction in which new plants are produced from different vegetative parts, such as leaves, stems, buds, and roots. Let us understand this with the help of a few examples. Cut a stem of a rose plant and bury it in the soil. Water it regularly. After a few days, the stem develops into a new plant. Similarly, cut a stem of money plant and keep it in a transparent water bottle. After a few days, you will observe the growth of the root and the shoot. Thus, we conclude that vegetative propagation can take place by the stem. You must have seen flower buds. Similarly, there are buds in the axle, that is point of attachment, of the leaf at the node. The bud consists of a short stem, around which immature, overlapping leaves are folded. This bud can give rise to a new plant. These buds are called vegetative buds. Let us perform an activity to understand sprouting of a potato plant. Take a fresh potato and observe scars on it. These scars contain buds which are known as eyes. Now cut the potato into four or five pieces with each piece having one scar. Bury these pieces in the soil and water them regularly. After a few days, the buds present in the scars develop into stems and leaves. Likewise, we can grow ginger and turmeric. Bryophyllum has buds in the margin of the leaves. If a leaf of this plant falls on moist soil, a new plant can grow from each bud. Bryophyllum leaf is an example of vegetative propagation. Dahlia root. The roots of some plants can also give rise to new plants, for example, roots of a dahlia and sweet potato. Some of the benefits related to vegetative propagation are it takes less time to grow. It bears flowers and fruits early. The new plant exactly resembles the parent plant. Reproduction in plants. Reproduction in plants. Like animals and human beings, plants also reproduce to ensure the continuation of the species. They reproduce in many ways. Most of the plants grow from their seeds. There are some plants that reproduce from different parts like the roots, stems or leaves. These plants are able to grow without seeds. The process by which the different parts of a plant grow into a new plant is called vegetative reproduction. Reproduction through stems have you observed a potato carefully? It has some small black dots on it called eyes. When an eye, also called bud, is planted, it grows into a new plant. Several plants like ginger and potato are actually underground stems. These stems store food in them and grow into new plants through their buds. Each bud grows as a new plant. Some new plants can also grow from pieces of the stem because they have buds on them. These pieces of stem are called stem cuttings. Many plants like sugarcane, rose, hibiscus, etc. grow from stem cuttings. Activity Take a big potato. Cut it into several parts in such a way 
that each part of it has a bud. Plant these potato parts in moist soil. These potato parts will grow into new potato plants. Reproduction from leaves. Some plants like the bryophyllum have fleshy and thick leaves bearing buds on its edges. These buds on the edges of the leaves grow as new plants. When leaves fall down on the ground, the buds start growing. Activity Pluck a bryophyllum leaf and place it in between the pages of a book. If you see it after two to three days, you will find several new plants growing from the buds all along the edges. Reproduction from Roots The roots of plants like sweet potato grow as new plants. Activity Take a sweet potato and support it in a bottle containing water using toothpicks. You will find that after a few days, a new plant grows in the bottle. Reproduction from Seeds We eat fruits. Some fruits have many seeds. Some fruits have only one seed and some have no seed at all. The seeds of different fruits have different shapes and sizes. Most plants produce many flowers that turn into fruits. They have seeds in them. But all seeds do not produce new plants. Some seeds are not fully developed, so they cannot grow into new plants. Some seeds have some diseases or defect in them. Some seeds are eaten by birds or destroyed by insect and other animals. So, only fully grown, healthy, intact seeds grow as new plants. Structure of a seed Take a few bean seeds or gram seeds and soak them for a few hours. Now, it becomes easy to split the seed and look at its parts. You will see that a seed has three main parts. A thick outer covering which is called the seed coat. This protects the seed from any damage and also from drying out. Seed coat can be thin and soft or thick and hard. It has a scar. This is the place where it was attached with the fruit. The scar has a tiny hole on it which allows water to enter the seed. Inside the seed coat, a seed has seed leaves. These leaves are known as cotyledons. These leaves cover the baby plant between them. The baby plant inside the leaves is known as embryo. The leaves of the seed have food stored in them and the baby plant uses this food to grow till it has leaves and can make its own food. Some seeds like rice, wheat, maize that belong to the gram family have only one seed Whereas, seeds like peas, beans, grams have two seed leaves. The baby plant remains inside the seed till it gets favorable conditions to grow. Germination of a seed A seed needs oxygen, water and warmth to grow into a new plant. Even if one of the three is not available to the seed, it will not grow. When a seed is exposed to the proper conditions, water and oxygen are taken in through the seed coat. The embryo's cells enlarge. Then the seed coat breaks open and a root emerges first, followed by the shoot that contains the leaves and the stem. This process of the growth of the baby plant from the seed into the young plant, called the seedling, is termed as germination. Dispersal of seeds. Plants need adequate space to grow properly. If all of them grow under the parent plant and do not get enough space, many of them will die in these conditions. When they will not get enough water, mineral salts or sunlight required for them grow, they will fight against each other for their needs 
and the weaker ones will die. That is why seeds need to be scattered away from the parent plants. This process of scattering or spreading of seeds to different places is known as dispersal of seeds. Dispersal of seeds happen in four ways through water, wind, animals and explosion of the fruit. These are known as agents of dispersal. Scattering by wind Some seeds have long and fine hair on them. Seeds like maple, dandelion, drumstick, medar and hiptage have wings or tufts of hair on them. These hair or wings help them to float in the wind. Scattering by water Some plants like lotus and coconut grow in or near water. The fruits and seeds of these plants are easily dispersed by flowing water. The coconut has a thick coverage of fiber and lotus plant has a spongy part that helps them to float. So, the seeds reach far away from their parent plants. Scattering by animals Humans and animals eat fruits that contain seeds. We throw away the seeds after eating fruits like mangoes, oranges, apples, cherries and plums. The small hard seeds of guava etc. are thrown out of our bodies with the waste. All such seeds are carried far away from the parent plants. Seeds of many plants have stiff hair, hooks or spines. These seeds stick to our clothes and the fur or skin of animals and are carried far away by these animals. Scattering by explosion of fruit Some fruits like pea, balsam, geranium and touch-me-not plants explode on drying. Their seeds are thrown out and scattered away from the parent plants. Know this, there are nearly 3,80,000 different kinds of plants on the earth. They are found everywhere except places which are completely dark and dry.